Born in the year of the elephant, even as a child, he was special. It was evident birth of the prophet mentioned in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18.18, that's your reference. Perfectly proportioned, the most handsome, most elegant. Impeccable character, the most humble and intelligent. Compassionate, considerate in speech, he's most eloquent even before he was a prophet. He was a man of great eminence. He's ranked number one in Michael Hart's book, Most Influential. Please refer to the book Sahadith if you need to check his credentials. His messages, worshipping Allah alone is essential and the Quran and his teachings make up all our fundamentals. On the day of judgment, we rely on Allah's mercy and his intercession. His words, pearls of wisdom, teaching us valuable lessons. Liberator, women's rights, he was against all oppression. The English language can't do justice, forgive me for my indiscretions. His face is more radiant than the full moon and his sweat smelt better than the most expensive perfume. The light that shone bright like the sun shines at noon need to follow his example if you want to be al-mutaqoon. He came to an illiterate nation out of time of desperation. He was a real revolutionary who ruled by revelation. Seal of the Prophet's wish and peace and salutations testifies the messenger of Allah before our daily congregations. When the Arabs worship fire and idols, he took them out of Jahiliyyah. Those were the real dark ages until people started to see clear. He faced so many hardships but still he'd persevere and his da'wah is the reason why you see me standing here. Even his enemies knew him as a Sadiq al Amin. They tried to assassinate his character when he spread the message of Tawheed. He invited everybody to Sirat al Mustaqim, but most rejected his message and they didn't take heed. Every step he'd take was for Allah and his deen. Allah split the moon for the Quraysh, yet they still didn't believe. In fact, they tortured the believers where a horrid sight it must have been, but imagine the status in Jannah of the earliest Shaheed. They called him a liar, a soothsayer, a madman, and a magician. They couldn't swallow their pride and let go of their traditions, offered him power, wealth and women to stop spreading the religion. But he said, even if you offer me the sun and the moon, I won't accept your proposition. They threw animal intestines on the Prophet. While he was in prostration, he even stepped on the blessed neck of the best of all creation. But instead of retaliation, he turned to his Lord in supplication. In the Lama As-Sabirin, verily Allah is with the patient. He was boycotted, insulted, treated like an outcast, but through the pain and the struggle, he still remained steadfast. He's a mercy to mankind, even says in the Quran. Surah al anbiya verse 107, he even led the Anbiya in Salah before he ascended above the heavens. When he went to preach in Taif, yeah, they pelted him with stones. He had blood-soaked shoes and he was bruised down to the bone. Jibreel alayhi salam descended, said, give me the command. I'll get the angel of mountains to destroy all their homes. But Allah's merciful messenger said, no one let them be, for the land may one day be home to people who believe. I remember these stories in times of difficulty and remind myself that the Prophet had it much more difficult than me. Even through the slander and the rumor spread by the people of Quraysh, the Ansar came to know about the Prophet's message and his demeanor. They accepted Islam and vowed to keep the Prophet safe so the Messenger of Allah had migrated to Medina. At that time it was known as the city of Yathrib. He ended their tribal feuds and led the people with justice. The land of the dates became the most blessed place, became an even bigger problem for the people of Quraysh because their caravans to Sham, they were no longer safe. The believers had a home, Islam had a base. He was content in every situation, indeed it is all Allah's Qadr. He even had the help of the angels at the battle of Badr. He told us to love for ourselves what we love for one another and subhanAllah referred to you and me as his brothers. I envy the sand that met his blessed feet. It's hard to comprehend how a man could be so humble. He's the perfect example for the likes of you and me and forgave the people that mutilated his uncle. The Sahaba, they became human shields for the Prophet. When in make voodoo, they'd be sure to catch every single droplet of water that would flow off his blessed body. The actions proved that they loved him more than anybody. Islam spread from Medina, Muslims multiplied in numbers. The idolaters in Makkah feared that the days were numbered. And when the Prophet returned to Makkah, he could have taken his revenge on the people that used to oppress and torment him. He could have captured everyone and enslaved them. He was in a position of power, surrounded by thousands of brave men. But what he did next left the people in amazement. Rahmatullah Lameen, he turned around and forgave them. The best leader, the best father, the best husband, the best person. Imagine how I must have felt to witness the last sermon. Imagine you were there and you had to lend an attentive ear and you had to hear that the Messenger of Allah may not be with you the next year. Indeed, the greatest calamities when he departed this dunya. We show our love for the Beloved by following his Sunnah. Inshallah, on the Day of Judgment, we get to drink from his blessed hand. 21st century role model. He's not just your average 7th century man. May Allah reunite us with him in Jannah and save us all from the fire of Jahannam. We love him more than our own selves. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.